Hey everybody, this is JP over in the technology department and I just wanted to create a short video just to kind of show you guys some of the differences between the current version of KISSflow version 1.0 and the new version, version 2.0, that we'll be rolling out in the next couple weeks here. One of the first things I want to show you is the old version and just kind of do a comparison between that version and the new version so you can see where things are located. Some of the things have changed, but for the most part it all pretty much works the same. So this is the new version of KISSflow and one of the first things I want to mention to you is that your version that you see will look a little bit different once we do convert everything over. I am using a test account right now, but just a, d a demo account, so we can just go ahead and show you some of the new features. Um, your screen obviously when you go to use it will not have this upgrade uh, box here. You also will not see these admin and masters list and maybe a couple other items because I'm also an administrator. So let's start off first by just going over the navigation. And I want to bring up the old version first, just kind of remind you where everything was in that one. So this is the old version, or maybe the current version that's currently in place. And you guys should be familiar with this. And again, some of this stuff might look a little bit different since I am an administrator. But uh, in the old version, what they had here was all your tasks and everything on the left here. Your request, so you can go in and access drafts you're working on and things like that. Uh, and everything you need to do was pretty much all started right here with this initiate request button. In the new version, it's pretty similar but a little different. So you still have your, your tasks and such available here. You also have your items. So again, you can go back to a draft or something else you know, that's in progress. Um, but they've also they've changed the location of the button to actually create a new request. Okay? I also want to show you this too. If you take a look here, this, this three-line button here gives you the ability to collapse this menu to give you a little more space on your screen. Um, so getting back to what I was saying in regards to starting a new request, that is actually now located in this lower right-hand corner at this plus button here in the lower right hand corner. So if we go down here and we click create new, we click on the plus there, we get this window that gives us the different requests that are available to us. For this demonstration purpose, I've only created one form and I've recreated the personal day request form since it is a fairly simple form. So as you can see here, we would have the list of all of the different request forms that are currently available. They will be automatically converted over to work with the new version when we do switch everything over. Uh, so for our purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and click on initiate for personal day request. Okay, one of the first things you'll notice is that the form is pretty much the same as the old one. Uh, you still have your title up here and, and you have a little bit of help information underneath the title for the section. And then you also have this indicator over here telling you how far along you are in the process. Uh, currently we have not done anything on this form so we're at zero percent. But if we went and looked at this form after we had completed it and had sent it off to somebody to be approved, we might see that it's at 25 or 50 percent depending on how many stops there are in the approval process. So let's go ahead and start off by just completing this form for a sample. I'm going to go ahead and complete some of the fields here. Okay, now I've already completed some of these fields, so it's a little easier for me, but you can see I've now entered my name, my location, and my email address. Now down below here, just like the old form, we have to go ahead and add a new row to this table before we can enter any information. just want to point out to you, as you're looking at this and there's no rows available, you see here it says no rows have been added. Once we go ahead and click this add a new row, it's not very clear that there is a row actually there, but if you go ahead and you place your mouse over the area, you will see that you can then enter text. In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose a date. I'm going to go ahead and pick a date of, let's say, April 28th. Let's say my reason for the request is going to be jury duty. I'm going to go ahead and enter my reason there. Uh, let's say I want to go ahead and request one other additional date at the same time. I can go ahead and click Add New Row, and as you can see, it gives us some area down here where we can add a second uh, date. So I'm going to go ahead and choose something the following month, and I'm just going to put Doctor Appointment. Okay. So now we've gone ahead, we've completed all the information. You can also see that we have some boxes down below for attachments and also comments. I'm just going to show you the attachment box really quick. It's going to look a little bit different than how it's going to look when you guys go to access it because when you go to access it, you will actually have your Dropbox account, excuse me, your Google Drive account rather, linked up automatically to your uh, KissFlow account. So in this case, we could go ahead and add a file directly from the computer or we can go ahead and choose to pull from one of these other locations. Uh, including Google Drive, as I mentioned before. Now, as I said, my account is not currently connected to Google Drive, but when you go to access this, you would see all of your work files available to you here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. So we're ready to go ahead and submit our form. So down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we have the options to delete, save, 
or submit. So I'm going to go ahead and submit it. You can see it's processing and it says it was successfully submitted. Now I can go ahead and I can see my items that are in progress over here on the left. We can see we have a one over here in progress and that shows me that we do have one form that is currently in progress. If we take a look at that form you can see all the information that we'd entered previously. For our demonstration purposes, I've actually gone ahead and had the form sent back to myself. So if we go over here and we look at the approvals area, we can actually see the item that is pending approval right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, again, just for demonstration purposes, approve my personal day request. And you can see it was successfully submitted. And you'll now see that I have another approved item here that previously said one, and now it shows two. And again, if we go here to approved, we can now see the personal day request for J.P. Hinkle is completed. I also just want to show you guys as well, if we go back to our home screen, that's the screen that we are currently on. This area here, you can actually see different items that are pending approval if you're a supervisor. You also have items down here that maybe require additional input. And again, you have this clarify area, which would be used for providing additional input if requested for clarification. Okay, so you do have all of those items down below here in your home screen. You also have this create a new box, which would give you a list of some of your most recently accessed um, request forms, okay, or processes. I also want to point out that in this version of KISSflow, you'll see that the requests are referred to as apps, okay. I will show you as well, if we go over here to the app screen, in here you can also see all of the different installed apps, which would be your personal day requests, your travel reimbursements, things like that that you currently access through KISSflow. You will see that there are some additional apps up here that KISSflow has provided, but for the most part you'll be using the apps that we create uh, and they will again be located down in this area here. Okay. You also have a help option up here if you click on the question mark and this will bring you to some additional videos that KISSflow has provided to just kind of highlight some of the other uh, abilities in the system. We're keeping this video very short, just kind of highlighting some of the changes, but if you feel you need to know more, you can go ahead and look in this area here. A lot of these videos do pertain to creating new forms, which most of you guys will not be doing, though I realize some staff may need this, so I just wanted to point it out. That's pretty much all the changes in KISSflow. We just wanted to make you guys aware of them before we roll out the new version. So again, the big changes are really just some of the navigation uh, has been relocated. The big thing being that you're going to start your new forms, or your new requests rather, by clicking on the Create New button down here in the lower right-hand corner, rather than in the upper left-hand corner it was previously located. Please give us a call or shoot us an email if you have any other questions over here in the technology department. We'll be glad to help you kind of find your way through the new system, but I don't feel you should have too many issues being it is very similar. Thank you for your time.